Okay, Booze Day Tuesday, folks. We hope you're on board. We're so excited about this. Welcome to Houston Life. Welcome. Cheers, babe. Cheers. What are we drinking? This is a grapefruit sparked and sparkling. Look at these fun cans. Oh, it's delicious. Crook and Marker. Now available. Isn't this fun? I thought this would be a fun thing to have off the top. This is like a soda? It's like sparkling. A, it's like a sparkling soda, but, but it's with, but with alcohol. Organic alcohol, zero sugar, oh, wow. gluten free. You're not going to ruin your abs mm. while drinking this. What abs? Mm -hmm. you can't ruin them if you don't got them, right? <laughs> That's what I say every day. This is good, isn't it? It is very good. That's the grapefruit. A little dangerously good. I've got more. We have two empty glasses. So let me know when you're ready. We have mango, and this is a black cherry. There's also black cherry lime. And tangerine, you have some other flavors over there. Wait, so what's so, the story behind Crook? So Where it's sparked and sparkling, zero sugar, zero artificial sugars, gluten-free, made with organic alcohol in eight tasty flavors. So, you know, a lot of times we talk about this too, about having a little cocktail or having your wine high in sugar, messes the diet. Well, but a maybe, lot of booze has uh, gluten in it. Exactly. It's going to be bad if you are sensitive to it or you have celiac disease. Exactly. And this is none of that made from organic alcohol too. So you can buy these. They're at Specs. Uh, where else are they? Lori's over here. H-E-B -E -B has them as well. Our friends over at... So your best friend Lori stopped by with booze. I mean, that is a true <laughs> friend. Oh, can we at least get them well. in the light? Oh, my, my gosh. gosh. They're in the dark. Oh, surprise, you're on TV. Yeah, and we're sitting you in the dark. We're sorry. That's all right. Best friend, we do love you. Oh, but you do look good on camera, though. You do look very good. These look parched. And Christy, I, they need a drink, huh? You're going to walk it over? Of course. You're such a good host. There you go. I'm just going to drink. Fantastic. We want to take care of our Thank guests. You. We appreciate it. Yeah, you Cheers. enjoyed those. Cheers. Lori's the one, the reason why I know about these. Lori, so you guys know Lori because we've talked about her on the show before. She has like this super fit body. In my next life, I want to come back as Lori. I, don't we all? Or at least Listen, as Lori's stand in arms. Line. <laughs> like to come back you can Lori's have her arms. arms, I'll have her abs. I've got a closet full of tank tops I never wear. <laughs> There's well, now, listen, that. you're not going to ruin your diet with this good stuff. Do you like it? I do like it. And you know what? I'm super parched because Tex had me running around the neighborhood like crazy. We were up early. Mm -hmm. We went on an hour and a half walk this You had morning. a sleepover little, last yeah, night. Texy, come on in. Oh, look at him. He looks a super bit sleepy. Withdrawals. You going to go to me? Huh? He's a Build-A-Bear, y'all. He's such a good He's boy. So, well, how was he at the sleepover? You know what? He was great, and we... Um, we have lived in this house for, I guess, a year and a half now, but it's so great. Having a dog, it's like it connects you with your neighbors. It also gets you outside, right? So The you neighbors you never knew you had? Well, <laughs> or neighbors that I knew I had, but neighbors who usually drive by and pretend they don't see me. But now, when this but little now, guy is around... Little text man, he's like the connector of people, and I guess anytime you're walking a dog through a neighborhood, uh, you get to know people, and it was great. I feel like I know a new dimension of the neighborhood. And I know you're not single, but they say that if you are looking for some Somebody, you know, you either take a dog or a baby, you know, because they're they're magnets. That's how single people meet people. But that just seems calculated. Well, sometimes it is. <laughs> like get a dog to find a man. Sometimes, or they just borrow. Like you just had a sleepover. I'm gonna go walk a dog. Look at all the people you met. I'm not saying you're starting a relationship with any of them, but that's not a weird thing. I mean, it's totally weird. I would never do it, but I'm saying it happens. It just seems kind of gross, and it makes me uncomfortable even talking about it. <laughs> People do that. And babies, too. What do you do, borrow a baby to go pick up a date? Like a stroller. You just take the baby on a, on a walk. I mean, not a stranger's baby. This would be like if you had a brother or sister, and they had a child, then the, the uncle... <laughs> I stopped listening like 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> you know, we all Help have that me out. one. This happened. We all have that one friend though who's like, you know what? Dude, I'm give me looking, your baby. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you have some really awesome friends. <laughs> I'm not you know, saying that happened. People who are like desperate to find like a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Desperate for love, yeah. Desperate for love, and I feel like if the only thing someone knows about you is that you are looking for someone to date. 
then you become like way less interesting. Do you know what I mean? I feel like well, you gotta go live life and enjoy life and become an interesting person and then people typically you know, meet people. You meet somebody when you're not looking for it. Yeah, that was, that's usually what happens. That was the case with Brandon and me. Yeah. I mean we yeah, but when Brandon and I started dating, I was done, done. Do you remember I dated that guy who punched me in the face? Oh my word. Yeah, I was dating this guy. I, that's still he, like Beatrice hasn't heard the story. He's punched me in the face at a bar and like yeah. But it was also in private. That was first. And yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's a it's a very painful chapter in life. <laughs> no. But After the that, good I was thing like, is you just know what? I can't date people. Like this is bad news. The violence is never the answer, right? No. And then, you know, voila, Brandon happened. So anyway. When you're not looking, it happens. When you're not looking, it happens. And the point Boy, is you never know where we're going in the first fifteen minutes of this you show. You certainly don't. And please don't email us asking if you can borrow text to pick up a man. It's or a woman, because we we check him he does get checked out, but not with people who aren't vetted. He goes on sleepovers. He gets checked out. He gets checked out like a library like card. A, like, <laughs> like a, a book library. at the library. <laughs> well, you checked him out. You had to go through a whole thing to get trained to take him home. No, no. I will never forget the, the first day I met little he Texas He is sleepers. At well, so a lot of you uh, write in and you ask about Texas energy level. Usually one o'clock, I think he hits the lunchtime slump, and so he's a little bit tired. But I'm telling you, after our hour and a half walk this morning, I so thought good. he would be exhausted. He got home, he ran up the stairs and ran up the other stairs, and upstairs was just super excited. And he also, what's an adjustment for me is Tex like totally watched us get ready this morning. Like it's a little weird when you're like getting ready, like taking a shower and Tex is just like sitting there watching the process. Well, why didn't you move him out of the room? I don't know, we wanna make sure what he's, if he's okay. he's traumatized? We wanna make sure he's like. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry that happened no, to you today. He's not traumatized. He was like jumping around excited. Huh. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited. Okay, so thank you again um, for this. You know what? Do you want to taste this one? By the way, I do want to taste that. Taste one. Taste that one. That's okay. the blackberry. Do you want some ice? Okay. Hang on. Look. So, so can are I you tell you? To get me drunk today? No, just a little taste test. Look, can I tell you something? I forgot to bring this up. About e it's it's old news because it's about Easter. Yeah. What happened? Um, so on Saturday we were coloring eggs, and I. Uh, have my little hard, bo hard uh, boiled egg maker machine, thanks to my best friend Lori. Oh, which those are awesome because they don't stink up your house right. like regular boiling. Right, and they does. they're perfect. Yeah. So I actually I had everything set up. I had the dye things and the cups, and I cut out brown paper bags and put it on the table so I wouldn't ruin my table with the dye and did all this stuff and got the eggs ready and I realized, oh, I don't have vinegar because you need vinegar to put the dye, to whatever. It helps so the I dye ran, stick to the egg or something. I ran to the store and I got the vinegar and we started the process and I'm just gonna tell you for next year, don't use brown eggs when you wanna dye Easter eggs. It doesn't. Why do you even it doesn't work. tell people that? I had no. <laughs> so you ended I up never with a bunch of brown eggs? A bunch of brown eggs dipped in dye and the eggs were still brown. What so we put stickers on it. color palette. Can you Easter. even believe? I mean, after I did that, I thought, <laughs> you made a separate trip to the store for the vinegar. To buy vinegar, and didn't even occur to me that I'm like I had brown eggs, and you have brown hair. Who knew? Who knew? That Isn't was, that amazing? That was a blonde joke. To I do. know. Yeah, I did sorry, get it. I fell flat. Don't I have, me hate I have blonde eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Terrible. <laughs> That's too bad. Are you surprised that I did that? I was very thrilled by the finished product. You know what else they did? There's like some shrink wrappy things that came in the egg. <laughs> What were they? There are shrink, shrink wrappy things that you put on the eggs and you oh, need a I hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it was just bad. They, Wait, it, finish the story. I think my hair dryer is too high heat. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I, it just like it disintegrated. There was nothing left. And then we couldn't crack the eggs. <laughs> we, what do you mean? I had to cut the the saran wraps thinky off the eggs to cut them. <laughs> wow. To crack the eggs. <laughs> what a sad house you live in. 
Just think the we're not sad. We like have. Happy oh. Easter. <laughs> the eggs are brown. <laughs> we can't eat them because we can't crack them. Oh, oh wow. isn't that terrible? You know, that sounds like a great segment. <laughs> Could you come in and show our viewers how to make... How not to do it? Courtney's Christmas. Mm hmm Even though it's Easter. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney's Christmas. We're making... Easter eggs at Christmas? I don't know. Some people Oh, this blackberry is very tasty, isn't it? I'm is sorry. that my read? Okay, still to come on today's show, you should hear what they're saying in our ear. <laughs> Want to get organized but not sure where to start? Don't listen to us because we have no idea, but we're just kidding. From choosing a color scheme to decluttering, interior designer Melissa Roberts, she's back in Houston Life to share five steps to minimalism. Oh, I am so excited about this segment. I would be happy living in an empty box with like one chair in the corner. Also, building a better burger, the executive chef from Hop Daddy Burger Bar is here with a mouthwatering recipe straight from their menu, by the way. You guys can make this at home. And by the way, the special sauce is caffeinated barbecue sauce. Huh. Caffeinated. Okay. Looking forward to trying that. I like that. Wake you right up. But before we get to all that, if you are like us, you're always looking for ways to shop and find and support local artists. And just recently, I found a brand that is not only making great jewelry right here in Houston, but also supporting a group of people with lifelong skills, making a living designing something that is very fashion forward. One of the things that's really big right now is the acrylic and also the raffia. So this is something that we put in com combination uh, following both of those trends. And then also another big trend, you know, of course, are the glass beads. So that's what I have on today. So this is the African glass beads. And so we have them in several different colors. And so this is really right for this coming season. And also the Lucite pieces, uh, that's super on trend as well. Oh one my of gosh. my favorites. I yes. actually own one of the earrings oh, too. Oh yeah, the Lucite earrings are great. And so what I love about the Lucite earrings is they're really light, but they just kind of transform your outfit depending on what you're wearing. And so we have them in lots of different colors and lots of different shapes. Denise Hazen is the founder and creative director of Aspire Accessories. She's been in the fashion industry for years, but mostly in clothing. A few years ago, she saw an untapped market. You always have to be one step ahead of the game because things are changing all the time. And so I'm constantly, I'm looking at magazines and I'm watching shows and seeing what everybody's wearing. And so I'm trying to stay ahead of the trend. And it's working. We've hit our half million dollar mark in sales. In such a short time. Yeah, three years. And our most expensive product is $100, so that's a lot of product that we have moved. Everything in the collection is made right here in Houston with lots of love, giving artisans who normally don't have a voice. Our fingers hurt after all. <laughs> right? <laughs> a platform to not only hand make something, but maintain a job as well. Well, I know this boutique is super amazing, but we want to have our photographer turn around because right through there, just a few steps from us, is where the artists are hard at work, right? This is where all the magic begins. So this is Aspire Accessories, and it is a program for young adults with autism and similar special needs. How many people do you have working here every day? So I have in the program 26 artisans. They come between two and five days a week, and this is their job. They come here, they work, and they are paid. Look at all of this happening right here. So here's some of the jewelry. These are all the things that they need from the wire cutters to the designs to the beads. Even the packaging is important, right, Denise? Oh, it's very important. For me, I want everything to look like it's coming from a trendy boutique in L.A. Can you walk me through? What are you doing here? Well, I'm just packaging with all those lovely earrings. Can you show me the earrings? I'd like to see what you got here. Oh, you know what? I'm such a fan of orange. Oh, yes. I love orange. So this is your deal. You make sure that the earrings are on there perfectly? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite color out of these? Which one do you like the best? It's yellow. Yellow you like? Just like Belle. Aww. Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Oh my gosh, I love Belle too. So do I. Her dress is so pretty. These are fantastic. Mm-hmm. They certainly are. What a cool job that every is. day you get to do it all is. these fun accessories mm -hmm. yes, and make great so jewelry. Much fun. Mm -hmm. What's the favorite thing on the jewelry side that you like to do? I think I like making our Emily necklaces. They're easy to time and they're a bunch of fun, fun, cool colors, and it's just 
It's a, it's a blast. Mm -hmm. And what's your job, though, on the accessory side? What do you normally I do? I normally braid. Mm -hmm. And this is all your braiding here? This is all my braiding here, yeah. Olivia has been here since Aspire launched three years ago. Those are your favorite? Yeah, they, these are my favorite. Just like the other employees, she loves coming to work and making beautiful things and having beautiful friends. But more importantly, this job gives them all purpose. Each employee has a checklist for their job, and once it's completed, they can move on to the next thing. So why do you think this is working for your employees? I think it works in a lot of ways. It's because our population really does like to have a product, a program that had starts with beginning and it has an end. So that really works for us because we set out what the instructions are and they know that we forecasted for them what is going to happen. And for Denise, Aspire Accessories is not just about selling beautiful pieces, it's definitely personal. I started this because I wanted my son to have purpose and what he got is a community. So that's what I love. They're all here, they're working together, they love each other. It really is, it's a happy environment. Isn't it so cool? It's so the great. inside. And we've had them on our show, I guess, a couple years ago, but yeah. it's great to see where all of the product is made. It's so cool. And of course, April is Autism Awareness Month, and it was so great to highlight what they're doing at Aspire Accessories, which targets basically that services cliff for this population of people once they age out of school supported based environments. Yeah. Giving them really empowering each artisan to take responsibility for their work, realize their potential, and increase their self awareness and confidence. And for more information, visit our site houstonlife.tv it was so great to meet all the artists and also wear and it, some of the things that I already had and you know they'll get a little card made by Diego who was the the gentleman in the purple sweatshirt who was working on bags when we were there that day so you met uh, Olivia and Valerie and so it was just really cool to see them all at work hard at work very very cool an impressive group Nicely done, Courtney. Thank you. Very nice story. All right, after the break, if you've been busy spring cleaning your home, the next step is maybe to, of course, decorate. We're sharing five basic principles to embrace a polished, minimalistic design, folks. We'll show you how it's done right after this. Welcome back. Minimalism has become a huge trend in home decor, and there are so many benefits from less clutter to focusing on the function of a room. Our next guest says you can achieve the style in just five easy steps. And we have all the details. Interior designer Melissa Roberts is back on the show. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Okay, this always sounds super easy. Just declutter. Uh, yeah, until you try to actually start to declutter. So you have a way to kind of map us through how to really get into kind of the minimalist living. Yes, definitely. So there's five easy steps. You just follow them and then at the end you just need to sit back and really enjoy your space and make sure you love and everything has a purpose that's in it. And right. the first step is decluttering, but this is way easier said than done. You know, a lot of people have a lot of stuff in their house. So what's your yes. strategy to tackling the clutter? So we all go shopping and we love like little accessories. So we end up with trays like this all over the room. We love pictures and so we put them in these bulky frames, but really we don't need all that. We just need to take, take all of these little pieces out and just simply Simplify, stack a couple of books, one simple object, and then put your frames away. Just pack those away and put your pictures into acrylic pieces like this so the picture is really the focal point. So you're saying this tray is what we want to avoid because yes. there's so much going on here. So much going on. Well, each piece is a cute, is really cute individually. It's it just is. It's too much. It's dust collectors. You don't need all that. Dust collectors. <laughs> <laughs> I love having pictures up around my house because yes. it kind of takes us through, you know, the timeline, especially of my kids. Memories. How do we deal with that? So I think it's just important, you know, take those pictures instead of like bulky traditional frames, get something like this, hang them on your wall, create straight lines on the wall. And really that's, you can create your memory lane and you can actually use colors that will like go with your home. You know, like if you have yellow shirts on or something like that, you know, you can bring out color that way, but just keep straight lines by lining them up cleanly on the wall. And that gallery wall we just uh, were seeing photos of, that is essentially using this acrylic frame, but the way you line them up so perfectly, yes. it looked visually very clean. It does, it does. It has a lot less clutter and it really just lets the eye just kind of focus on the pictures and not so much like what all is going on. 
on here. And you also say focus on function. And what does that mean? That's per room? Yes, yeah, so in every room, anytime I'm helping clients, or even myself, you know, um, when I recently did my home office, it was important, what is the room gonna function for? And what do I need each piece? That way I don't have tons of clutter just sitting everywhere. Everything has a purpose and I know what it needs to be used for. Yeah, that's true. And I love the decluttering, by the way, doesn't mean you can't have the family photos up. Of course we yeah. wanna have that. Keep your memory. Let's talk about office decor. That's what we're seeing on the screen right now. And this is uh, beautiful. Thank really you. Yes, so that is just a simple, um, it's a buffet, you can call it a credenza, but it's important because if you open those doors in there, it's where I keep my toolboxes for install days. I have my work bag in there, my pencil sharpeners in there, everything's in there, so it's not just out on the desk causing more clutter, you know? I open it up and everything is right there, but it looks nice and clean from the outside. Put away, basically. Yes, and yes. if it doesn't fit, let's basically think about do we really need it, right? Where, right, where, what all do you need, what do you not need, and just kind of simplify things. And one of the things that you uh, recommend simplifying, this is actually your third tip, the color scheme. Yes. Keep the color palette very simple and then add color using objects like plants and pillows. Yeah, so um, everyone loves color, but when you start adding like four colors, five colors, it really just gets too much. Your eye doesn't know where to function, like look at, you can't figure out what is the main focal point here. So if you can keep it to two to three colors using your neutrals with a pop of like green or blue, it really works better. That's just like perfect for the minimalist. I love that. And then you can also, change it out, right? Absolutely. Per season? Yes, and that's why I love using like pillows, you know, throw blankets, things like that, small pieces of art, because it is so easy to change those. It's not as expensive. Look at that black and white room on the Fantastic. Screen. You also so say nice. layering texture. What exactly does that mean? Is that kind of what you're doing here with the velvet? Yes, yeah, so we have velvet and linen, and then, you know, with this vase, it's brass. It's got like great texture in it with all the details, but you know, any kind of plants, whether they're artificial or real, you know, they add great texture and then nice wood details, whether you have tile, marble, like millwork on the walls, you know, that just adds so much texture but allows you to really keep the decor very simple. And you're hitting on something because that's an artificial plant, right? Yes, yes. So I got this vase online, absolutely loved it. And I was just thinking, you know, what am I going to do with this? So I just thought, you know, what if I just add some succulents? I just simply put some in here already and then just keep adding to it. And I just wanted it to be very simple. So I kind of offset them and just left them all on one side instead of like filling the vase completely up. Yeah, uh -oh. and Melissa, your last tip is to edit. So you mean go through a room and yeah, so it means go through the go? first four steps and then take a step back and look at, think about it again. Does the room have a purpose? Does everything serve a purpose? You know, is it functioning well? And if not, maybe you notice your tray is a little bit full. Try to take something out and just make sure that everything is there that you love, you really need, and that you're going to enjoy. Yeah, we all have way too much stuff, right? I oh. definitely do. Guilty. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for thank you. By some thank you so beautiful much. Beautiful tips. And if you would like to connect with Melissa, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. And coming up next, it's National Distracted Driving Awareness Month. We're discussing the dangers of driving and not paying attention when we come back. may not think it's a big deal to talk on the phone, text, or eat while driving, but studies reveal 100 Americans are injured every single day in crashes caused by distracted drivers. Here to talk about why you may want to reconsider what you do behind the wheel is Comcast Director of Safety, Tom Baker. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is a very timely topic. I mean, I feel like the cell phone is always in our hand. It's always next to us, even when we get into, the, into our vehicles. And we see it everywhere, right? Uh, Absolutely. When's the last time you saw somebody texting and driving? Oh, constantly. I mean, all the time. It's probably all on the, the way time. to work today, right? So, yes, and, and thanks for having us on because we're trying to get the word out about Distracted Driving Awareness Month. And it's really cool that you're doing this, uh, and we'll show you how the simulator works in just a minute, but you guys at Comcast are really making a push to ensure that your drivers are operating their vehicles safely. That's right, Derek. We have 1,200 drivers out every day in Houston, and we put on a million and a half miles a month in city driving around Houston. Wow. So, so keeping our drivers safe is, is critical to us. And, you know, they bring this message home to their families. We want their families to be safe driving too. Absolutely. I mean, it just takes one, one second to take your eye off the road and you're in, you're in an accident or something more worse. Do you want me to sit down? I do. I want okay. you to have a seat. 
I'll I have my phone, phone here on the seat, right? I was instructed to do that. So when we, when we built the simulator, we wanted to find a safe way that we could put our drivers behind the wheel of a vehicle. You're going to deal with traffic. You're going to have things that come at you. You can go ahead and pull out. Just step on the gas. Oh, we should You need to put your seat ahead a little bit. The, uh... Can okay. you reach the gas pedal? There we go. There we go. There you go. And the car is moving now. The car is moving now. So, so you kind of get the hang of this, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted to have this kind of a circumstance or situation. See, oh, wow. with traffic, you don't know what they're going to do. And so your speed's here. So you're going 11. So if you can get yourself up to about <laughs> what you would expect. <laughs> and some folks, Tom, may say, hey, you know, I, I text all the time. People successfully are able to send a text message without crashing on the way to work every day. What do you say to those people? Well, I would tell you this, that, that, that Courtney is probably very adept at doing texts, very good driver. So it, the, the, the simple fact, Eric, is you don't do two things at once. You, you text or you drive, and you switch back and forth very quickly. Oh, now I'm going the so, wrong direction. No, you don't have to worry about that part. Oh, That's okay. just part of the game. So go ahead and get up to speed, and okay. here's what I want you to do. I want you to unlock your phone. I did. All right, and I want you to send somebody a text. Send Derek a text. Okay. Okay, yeah. look so, at this. I even stopped in the wrong, in the middle of the oh, road trying to get on yeah. my phone. All right, go ahead. You can pull out. Okay, let me find you, Derek. Because it's just a stop sign, right? And so the cars yep. are behind you. I just no. sent you a text. Beep, beep, beep. All right. And it is pretty staggering as well when you think 40,000 people die in car crashes every single year. But nobody yeah. thinks that it will ever happen to them. So the length of time that a person actually looks down is surprising. People think that they're sending a quick text. But the average time is four seconds. And at highway speeds, that's the length of a football field. Oh, my gosh. And so if you think about that person you saw out driving that was 10 miles per hour below on the speed limit or, or running on both white lines, that person is not aware that they're driving poorly. Yeah, so they're, they're traveling the length of a football field without their eyes on the road. I'm and just going to do this because right? everybody scrolls, right? They scroll on the phone. Oh, look at that. So fast, right? Yep. A lot of sidewalk driving you're doing there. I know. Me. But this simulator, though, is great. I mean, is this, is this something that folks, like general public, can go and do someplace? Well, so we do take it out uh, the, at the George R. Brown Center, the Hispanic Careers Month. We are uh, our event. We had it out there. We put over a hundred people through the simulator that just had a chance to drive it. Moms and kids and parents. It was very impactful. So what we all found out, what everybody finds out, is they simply are switching back and forth between texting and driving. Do you feel that way? A hundred percent. I mean, right. it's just it's so. I'm. I think my heart rate is elevated knowing that I'm on TV doing this. But just still, it's just it's. And obviously so very speed control is difficult. Right? Yeah. So. So the, the end result of this is that we've had great success at Comcast. We've been campaigning it for about a year and a half, and we dropped our accidents, 26% uh, of our Comcast drivers. I that is crashed. fantastic. Courtney just crashed. And again, I know this is a simulation. It's like a video game. Um, you know, it's kind of funny to crash in a video game. But if this were real life, that would have some serious, serious uh, consequences. So, Tom, thank you so much for oh, stopping by. Thank you, Thanks Derek. for your work. Thank you, Tom. Nice job, Courtney. Appreciate it. Safer. Thank you sure. very much. And in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about how you can prevent distracted driving, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, and look for the Scene on Houston Life section. And guys, after the break, folks in Houston are line up to eat burgers from Hop Dottie. And they're in our studio sharing a recipe from the menu that's made using caffeinated barbecue sauce. We're going to share it with y'all when we come back. So, folks, have you ever tried caffeinated barbecue sauce on a burger? Well, now's your chance. It's a thing. Adam Geisinger, executive chef from the popular burger spot Hop Dottie, is in our studio. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So, this is kind of a cult following Hop Dottie burgers, wouldn't you yeah, say? Absolutely. I mean, you've got some big accolades included in the list of best burgers in America by readers of Food and Wine magazine. Not, a, not that big of a deal, no I guess, right? MBD. You know, <laughs> MBD. Exactly. So, why do you think you, you guys, your burgers are so popular? We just do everything fresh. We have great, you know, great product. We grind in house. We bake bread. We we go above and beyond for a simple classic burger. Well, but you guys also do things like the truffle mac and cheese mm. burger. I mean, the burgers are sort of like over the top and extravagant. Yep. What's the meaning behind the name Hop Dotty? So Hop, beer, 
It's okay. the flour that goes in beer. It's, it's the base, what everything is made from beer. Um, and then dotty is the Scottish uh, slang term for the Black Angus cow, which is exactly what we serve. Oh. So hop dotty. So. I okay. love that. Yeah. Learn something It's a little fun play on words, you know? Yeah. We like to have fun. Who doesn't Very like nice. that fun with burger and beer? Well, so. let's put together some of the burgers. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do our good night, good cause today. Um, proceeds from all across the country uh, go to regional... Um, uh, charitable foundations. Charitable foundations, thank you. Um, we're Perry Winkle Strong here, so oh, that's nice. why we, love we just Perry like... Winkle. Absolutely, so we like to come out here. So we're going to build our classic good night with our caffeinated barbecue sauce. Um, obviously, we're going to start with, if you'd like to do it. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. So we have our sassy sauce here. It's gonna go, well, that's going to go on the bottom. Okay, sassy, sassy sauce. sauce. Sassy, sassy sauce. sauce. So it's, it's a mayo-based. It's got a little bit of our horseradish honey mustard in there. Nice. So it's got a little kick, but it's sassy. Okay. I like you know? it. But nothing too crazy. Okay. Um, and then if you'd like to, we, uh, again, always fresh produce every single day so lettuce first green leaf lettuce all right uh, and then fresh slice yeah then fresh sliced tomato right there uh -huh. bam right on top yeah awesome okay. and then of course the star of the plate right so you come over here we've got our black angus cow here um, and then our tillamook cheddar on top which you guys can already tell is amazing mm -hmm. and, and then, then some grilled onions yep well it's actually our house made yep house made caramelized onions right there and then i'll help i'll help you out on this one perfect that's and a big burger. It is. it is. About seven ounces. Um, now, yeah. you got to explain the meaning behind, uh, or the reason behind, the caffeinated barbecue sauce. So you're in Texas. Okay. you got to have a great yes. barbecue sauce, right? But we, we wanted to do something that kind of edges us out a little bit, so we add a little bit of coffee to it. Um, just kind of gives it a little bit of bitterness, but the sweetness with the caramelized onions really mix as well. And coffee, that's not uncommon to do with barbecue, right? No, there's a lot of rubs that already yeah. have it, um, but ours is next to none, I believe. The best? Mm. Yeah. Delicious, that's right? Good. Yeah. Go ahead, drizzle that on top. Oh, wow. And we usually do about an ounce, Ooh. but you know, sauce is best. Okay. So, however you feel. A little bit more? Okay. Hey, go crazy. Okay, going to town here. And then I'll handle the spicy stuff, because I'm spicy. Those are uh, freshly cut These, jalapenos. Yep. And yeah. then we're going to have freshly cut jalapenos right on top, just to kick it up a little bit. And then you have some seasoning here. What we is this do. used for? So everybody, salt and pepper. Everyone loves salt and pepper, but um, you can do garlic, uh, garlic pepper. You can do onion powder, mustard, a little bit of sugar to give it some sweetness. Uh, we kind of mix a little bit of everything in there. And is that in the burger already? or that's It's not in, gonna... but that's what we season it with. Oh, yep. okay. Very yep, nice. Absolutely. So if you don't want the seasoning, you can definitely do without. And okay. then obviously, every Hop Dottie burger is not complete without a pick and a top one. Ah. Oh. And by the way, I know this is all about the burgers, but you guys do some very over-the-top shakes as well, milkshakes. Absolutely, shakes. yeah. We, we have uh, some vintage shakes. So we've got some s'mores on there. We like to do, uh, we, we do specials every month, so we like to shake it up and literally shake it up. And, <laughs> and we like to find some fresh stuff that, uh, that maybe not everyone's using that month. I love right. it. And all kinds of uh, locations here in Houston. Uh, the yep. Heights location just recently opened a, a few months ago, right? Yeah. Jan uh, February? Jan yeah. Somewhere? Yeah. We've a couple been there months a few ago. Times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're really proud. Love Houston. Well, we love having you guys here. Thanks so much for stopping by the show today, awesome. Adam. Great to Thank see you. Thank you. And in the meantime, uh, if you'd like to connect with Adam and to see the recipe, you can check out the food section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, if you've been cutting back on the burgers and still struggling with those problem areas, <laughs> eat the burger, then stick around. After the break, how to target extra fat around your midsection. Just in time to hit the beach, but I'm going to hit this burger first. Go for it. Yeah. Welcome back to Houston Life. Okay, folks, if you've been diligently sticking with those New Year's resolutions, maybe you're stuck with those stubborn areas, don't worry, we understand. That's why we've invited Dr. Shatali Nangrani with Vedas Medical Spa and Wellness Center to demonstrate one of their popular procedures. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And I can hear the machine already sort of going to work. Describe to us what M-Sculpt is. So M-Sculpt is the new electromagnetic pulsing device, which is latest and greatest on the market to build the muscle and bond the fat. So here's what we're doing. We you know, when we go from outside, we hook the machine up and we, as you can hear, she is getting these contractions, which are involuntary, just okay. like getting 20,000 
crunches in a setting of 30 minutes. 20,000 crunches. Yes. Over the course of 30 minutes. Yes. And okay, so so the whole purpose of this then is to build and tone muscle, right? Absolutely. But at the same time, the byproduct is people also are losing fat cells. They are. So it's bursting those fat cells and it's toning the muscle up. So it's building the muscle volume in there. Okay, Savannah, I've got to ask you because someone would look at you and say, okay, well, she's in perfect shape. She doesn't <laughs> need to change anything. But this is sort of the after. You've given birth, you're a mom, and I understand you had a, a hip replacement when you were very, very young. Yeah. Yeah, I did, and it. I had a hip replacement and then two cesareans, so the tissue damage is just like, I couldn't really rebuild any of the lower abs. Like when I'm flat on the ground like this, I, it's hard for me to even lift up and even get into a crunch position. So this is, it's really like pulling in the muscle and building it and I'm gonna have abs. <laughs> That's amazing, we all want them, right? What yeah. are you feeling right now? It just, it's a, ting, it feels like it's tingling and then it kind of vibrates and then it squeezes and pulls up and just kind of makes my <laughs> abs pull up where I can't even control it. So that involuntary contraction, that's really, doctor, what's yes. working and causing So the, even the if muscle. you wanted, there's no way during your workouts you can do these many crunches on your own. So this is, this is what I hear from my patients, that they want the bellies tied and uh, <laughs> yeah. the butt. Yes, you know, lift girl. it in tighter and everybody wants that little six pack look. So now you can get it very easily with the 30 minute session. And what would what would a patient feel during the procedure? And these are great before and after photos we're saying, by the way. Are you feeling soreness afterward? You do. So really what, you know, when I felt it, I felt, and I'm sure, you know, Savannah is feeling the same. You feel a little of crunches going on, like you're getting a little workout, mm -hmm. but nothing unbearable. Yeah. And then there's no heat. There's no, nothing to worry about. You're laying down, you're comfortable and we can you know keep going up on the settings this is this is very easy to do you know anybody can do it in your office as well and um, and what happens is later on you feel like a little soreness like you've done some workouts Okay. But you haven't really. The, well, uh, well, that's the You're magic of all of this. So, and let's talk about where you guys are located and what the office is like. Because you're up in uh, up in the woodlands, right? We are in the woodlands, and we provide all kinds of aesthetic services. Um, you know, and we do everything from Botox to fillers to smart lipo, as well as we have every latest and greatest technology. It's beautiful. Oh, it's like a day spa. Oh, Very yes, nice. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, smart lipo because this is a term uh, you and I were chatting about earlier, but explain how that works. So smart lipo is also for those stubborn areas where genetically you can want to work out but you haven't been able to so what we can do is go underneath the skin under local anesthesia and get the fat out okay. and then tone up the muscles with the M-sculpt. So someone could do a, a smart lipo and then they could also do the M sculpts together. They can together. always do a combination, yes. And how do you figure out like which course of treatment is most appropriate? Well, what we really love is to look at our patient. Everybody comes with different expectations and their history is always different. So we like to meet with them and customize a aesthetic plan for them and meet their needs and expectations. Well, and meeting needs and expectations. Savannah, how are you feeling? And, and what ultimately is your goal? I um I just really after like like I said having two kids I really wanted to tighten up the skin as much as I could and um I I mean the results are amazing it's it's happened it's only been three weeks three weeks right yes yeah, Savannah has done smart lipo with us already and, and like, now she's on our journey with them sculpt I'm just gonna look fire for summer you're gonna look yeah. fire for summer. <laughs> That is yeah. awesome. <laughs> Looking fire for summer. Okay, so let's talk a little bit uh, about the specials. So essentially, people can come in and get four sessions for $3,500, bucks, which is a $500 savings. There's the info on your screen. If you want to do six se sessions, $4,500, which is a $1,500 savings. Also, uh, Smart Lipo, you can get a small area for just there under $1,300, bucks, twelve ninety nine. dollars Absolutely. And we have our anniversary coming up, which is going to be nine years at our office on May second so if you wanted to come and meet us and uh, it's five to eight so we would love to see you guys there very nice so nine years in business that's yes. a long time and uh can't wait to see your fire summer yes, bod. I'll come see you and you show you. Come <laughs> back and see us, Savannah. Okay, guys, if you'd like more information, you can call 281-298-5476, or you can go online to vetusmedspa.com. And when again is your anniversary party? May 2nd, 5 to 8. May 2nd from 5 to 8. All right, doctor, thanks so much for Thank stopping so by. Much. Savannah, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. All right, see you in a few months, folks. <laughs> After the break, folks, it is also German Beer Day. Did we mention that? From how it all started to the popular styles, professional beer drinker Chad Bilbeam. Oh, there he is doing his thing, drinking.
We'll see him right after this. Welcome back. Pilsner, Kolsch, and Oktoberfest. They're all German beer styles you might have heard of or maybe even tasted. But what's the story behind those brews and how did German Beer Day inspire the craft beer movement right here in the U.S.? And an orange has to do with it somewhere along the way. Certified Cicerone and host of What's on Tap Radio, Chad Pillbeam is back here with all the details on your national holiday. It's right. Every time I come on, you guys are always... We're drinking beer. It's fantastic. I don't... I, I, and you guys got a jump start. I saw you guys were drinking We earlier. had cocktails first. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Just a, a light, light cocktail. But Chad, you really are the master when it comes to this. I don't know Thank how you. you go on the radio and just talk about beer for hours and hours and hours at a time. Apparently, there's a lot to say. There is. There's a lot happening in the world of beer. And today is uh, German Beer Day. But before we get started, I thought we would do something a little fun. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about German Beer Day. But uh, there's a contest called Stein Hoisting, or also known as Maskrug Stemmen. Yeah. Where you hold out your stein like this. I thought maybe while I just Describe this, and I, normally I put beer in here. Um, I would do that for you, but I don't want you to spill. So why don't you just go ahead and take that one there? Oh, terror. Yep. And here you go, Courtney. Can we switch arms? Uh, and, and no, you cannot. And so the idea, and you hold it out straight, just like that. Okay. And while I tell you about German Beer Day, don't bend your elbow. And and uh, by the way, the world record is 21 minutes. I'll be happy if you can make it about three, because your yeah, minutes. your arm minutes. starts to burn after a little while. Lori could do it in 21 minutes. Yeah. I know. Can I switch I off? Can I tag? Arms. My goodness. Can I tag? Can we Lori? Find a friend? No, you cannot. <laughs> yes. So just let me. You know, by the way, we do so that right there, that right there is a Moss or a Moss Krug. Moss meaning one liter. Krug this is the uh, type of glass that you have there. So a Moss Krug, one liter glass. I'm already and I see the shaking going on there. It's it's a little bit heavy. And so uh, this is an actual competition that they hold, the Bavarian Strongman. I have no idea what you're even talking I'm about. Not I'm not hearing the word. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit of a challenge to try and pay attention and keep your arms straight without spilling any beer. But the idea is you got to keep your elbows straight and you got to hold it up. It there. would be a lot easier if I could just be distracted. Yeah. Oh, okay. This well, then here, watch then this. I See, I already poured Look you a beer. This. What There's, is this? That is a Pilsner for you. Cheers. And I have a Schwarz yes. beer for you, a Schwarz beer being a dark lager. So you have a black lager right there. And so, yeah, so now Taking you guys are double drinking. fisting exactly. to a whole new level. Right. And so you are. <laughs> I am you like so that? annoyed right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. This yeah, that's right. This, this is, is the last time I get invited back. <laughs> no. Okay. You gave, me a, you gave me an exercise. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, so why is National German Beer Day celebrated then? Well, so uh, the Bavarian Purity Law of 1516, on this day in 1516 in Germany or Bavaria, they signed a law that said you could only make beer with barley, hops, and water. And that that ensured the quality of the beer that was being made. And you hold on. All right, she's done. All right. So congratulations, Derek. You have won the Good very job. first. You have won the very first Houston Life Mustard Stemmen. I was digging my nails into my hand. You know, probably would have been a little bit nicer if I'd given you the half liter. Uh, <laughs> well, now you tell me. I know we could have done looks. that. It really is harder than it looks. It is. It is. It is brutal. But Ooh. now, but your reward, you get to drink beer. Good job. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so what now? Can some we of the other. Start what are we talking about? So, so right, so German Beer Day, German Beer Day, when the Bavarian Purity Law went into effect, also known as the Reinheitsgebot. Yeah, say that three times really fast. Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot. Well done. Okay. Is so, that a bad word, by the way? It's not. It's actually inspired the American craft beer movement because it said, hey, it, it got associated with quality because we're only going to put in barley, hops, yeast, and water. And since that was the purity law, said this is all we're going to put in. We're not going to put in any fake sugars or any additives or preservatives. We're just going to make real, honest beer. And that's what craft brewers wanted to do for a long time. They want to say, hey, let's make something that's different than all the, the, the beer that's coming out of factories. And and has all the preservatives and foam stabilizers and said, no, we're not going to do it. And so we've got commercial examples here uh, from Germany. And then we also have just some samples here, some examples of uh, American craft beer that was inspired by those styles. And so that's that's really what it, German Beer Day is. It celebrates the Reinheitsgebot, which says, hey, you know what? This is all about quality beer. And there's all different, basically, levels, right, from light to dark? Right. Exactly. So it's, no, it's, it's just like your American craft beer movement starts off Pilsner beer, for example. Pilsner beer, which, for example, we do have this one right down here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up and show you here. This is, this is a uh, German Pilsner right here, Bitburger. This right here, this style inspired most of the big name beers that your grandpa drank and your dad drank, you know, 
BMC, Bud Miller Coors, all Pilsner style beers. And so this, this Pilsner right here, this is exactly what inspired those types of things. And, and as far as the American beer movement, as far as where we came from and how we evolved, it all started with everybody drinking a nice, easy, crisp lager like that. Chad, let me ask you, le we're less than a minute, by the way, left in the segment. Oh, wow. If you're on your way to a pool party and you know your friend is a beer snob or they really love craft beer, yeah. what do you buy? Because they're like now, so even many. in a grocery store, there are so many to choose from. I like, uh, we've got a beautiful variety up here. We have something nice and malty, like a Bach beer. You go Bach beer, you don't have to worry about somebody who doesn't like bitter beer. And so it's got nice malt flavor. Uh, and I, as I explained, nice easy drinking beer down there with the Pilsner. But right here, this is always a fun one, a Rattler. This is a blend between wheat beer and a uh, carbonated soda. And, and actually, it Rattler literally means cycler's beer. So that's what it stands for. Nice. And so really nice beer, really refreshing. By the way, just a little fun fact for you. Uh, in a uh, wheat beer, you ever see the little orange wedge on the side? Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do this at home. Pay attention right here. Never put the orange wedge on there because all that citric acid kills the beautiful head in your beer. We got to leave it there, Chad. For more info on What's on Tap Radio, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And thanks so much. We'll be right back. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks. Yep. It's time to vote in our very first Cool Schools contest brought to you by Go Public Gulf Coast. Well, there are 12 districts to vote for, grouped into five polls according to size, and you can head there now to vote and see the totals in real time. Almost 14,000 votes so far. And we will be announcing the winners on Tuesday, April 30th. So good luck to all the districts who are involved, and special thanks to our I know! Christine. Yay! Thanks for coming, friends. So thanks for, having thanks for being Thank here. Mwah. Mwah. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye. That was fun. That was fun.